in, in, this, in this presentation, to put your mind in this presentation. Um, today, we, we see that there are more and more and more global problems. Now we have uh, the NBA all over the world, we have Cosmo One all over the world, we have MotoGP all over the world, we have tennis, we have golf, we have so many sports that you can see that before, like 20 years ago, you could not see, but you were just watching the local team in your hometown, or you were watching the national TV, the national teams, the national sport, and other sport is all over the place. You can watch the Champions League, you can watch um, cricket league, you can have a, a rugby, we can, we can see everything you want. So, for local brands that they were the only one in, in one city, in one country, they are facing that now they are coming all these global brands, sport brands providing new experiences, no sports experiences, and, and, and it's a difficult situation. How they can survive, how the local brands can survive. So we're going to talk a little bit about this. So let's think a little bit about the local brands. Um, I call it the existing model, the model that was there forever. So you have a countless basketball team. So what, what countless basketball team is providing to you to the fancy countless? Uh, of course, the, 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 the local brands were bringing identification. They have the team and the players from your local city. So you see them during the day, you see them live, you see them, you see them in the game. They are defending your city, they are defending your colors. So you feel like you're part of them and they are part of you. So you have this identification that with global brand, when you're watching a movie game, you don't have. So with this identification, you have a look and feel the property, you can breathe the property, you can wear the t-shirts of the team, you're walking around the scene wearing the cameras, the Venus cameras, the jerseys, and everybody is thinking the same experience. Everybody is thinking the same because it's the local team. And you can go to the game. You can be at the game, you can film the game presentation, you can be uh, and see the cheerleaders, you can see the crazy doctors, you can see whatever uh, property the Chinese comes from, or the percentage. You can touch the stars, you can have a place experiences. A player can come to the Council University and have a lecture here, a player can come to school, you can have a basketball clinic where the players can go and play and play with you and teach you how to play. So you have the players, you can touch the players, you can feel it, you can lead the players. Um, another thing that you have when you have a local brand is the life of the, the prime time of the local community. Um, for example, with the NBA, you have games at 3 o'clock in the morning. But with the local team, you have the games at 8.30. So you can work, you can meet your friends, have a cook, have a beer, and then go to the game. And you can see the game in the right time, in the prime time, whenever you are playing to see that. We saw last night the early games, Rita is playing against Bota Motif at 8.30. Good game, you can see it after work. And if you have a local team, then because it's a local team, we'll broadcast the game and you can see the players and you can see the game. National partners, relevant local institution. When you have a local team, you have a for example, with the Italian Federation, we have Pichi, we have uh, the DMV as a sponsor, you have a local sponsor, the National Bank, the national supplier of fish, meat, whatever companies are, local companies that are engaged with the local team because it's the identification of the local team. You have also local institutions and you have the fans. Um, municipalities, uh, governors, um, government are behind the team but they are supporting the team because it's a local thing and it's a part of uh, their role to support the local sport and to promote the local sport. So at the end, the value of the chain is you have the local athletes, you have a local arena where you can, hit, you can leave uh, the, uh, the game and you can have a live content, you have a direct marketing, so you can promote and do sweet takes, you can interact with the marketing production, from marketing promotions directly with the fans that are out of the arena. So you have everything here. But now we see that all the properties are coming to commerce, like the NBA today, but all the properties are coming. So we see that are new faces in all the places. So for example, the NBA 
We understand that vast uh, majority of the game. We have uh, 500 million people in the whole world playing basketball. So we just don't want to be focused in the US anymore. We want to interact with all the basketball fans all over the world. So we have 149 million players in China. Of course, we have them in China as well. Imagine how many basketball fans we have, potential basketball fans to follow the NBA. So, global properties are seen, they see that there are um, people doing sports all over the world. So, the same in basketball, will be become global properties. And they want to be there. They want to go out there and interact with everyone. So, the people, uh, their sports global properties, change their mind and say, like, we have to be everywhere. It's not like I'm a US company based in the US, that I have a TV deals all over the world, and then I put my content on the TV and that's it. No, no one wants to do that anymore. People want to go out there, interact with people, and touch and build fans all over the world. And the global properties will change. And they are going in this direction, you will see more and more and more commitment to do experiences, to do events, to do things all over the world. So global brands. Challenges versus the global brands. I'm going to talk about the NBA a little bit. Uh, we don't have the arena experience. Cams, Adidas Cams have fans at the arena, I don't have the arena here, so I, don't, I cannot provide the, the arena experience. I get that I don't have the life. Since I'm, I'm not here, I cannot provide a direct experience to my fans. I can, they cannot come and touch the NBA. They don't have a direct experience. I have a prime time challenges. I'm a US company. Uh, I have my games in prime time in the US, but this is 3 o'clock in the morning. It's a, it's a big challenge for me. I'm committed to, to come to Lithuania, to be with my fans here, but my games are 3 o'clock in the morning. What can I do? So at the end, fans cannot bring the game in the same way that a local brand can do here in Madrid, in Real Madrid, or in Barcelona. But we have also, when we decided to go globally, we knew that we have to make a huge commitment with our brand to provide international experiences. We can open the games, but we have to give them the best experience, digital and TV experience we could. So, and we have our strength. The good thing with the global properties, Formula One or the NBA or tennis, when you have a window, is that you have the best athletes. Um, when you are the number one property, like the uh, Champions League, you have the best, the best teams and the best players. The global properties has the best athletes, and this is a good thing. Because at the end, um, when they see Barca, they see Navarro, and the fans want to follow Navarro, or Jesse Galicius, when he was playing in Barca, you can just click in the website and see Navarro's best highlights. But now, you can see with one click, the best LeBron games, LeBron games highlights. So we decided to bring the best athletes to everyone through our uh, digital platform, through our social media, through our TV, because this is our strength. We have the best players in the league. Our challenge is how to make them um, be all over the world in the same way that you have your local athletes here, but we have the best athletes. We're global properties. I'm talking about when I'm from one, we don't talk too much about the NBA. They are the best event makers. If you are watching a Formula One competition race in Qatar or whatever, Dubai, you see that you look, for you, it looks like you're driving the Formula One. You have 17 cameras, you have one camera that is in front of the, the, the wheel, so you, you, you feel like you're almost driving the car. You have the radio, you have the noise, and you can see what the, the Ronaldo also or Mendel is talking to his team because they connect with the radio. So they, the global brands are doing great, great, great broadcasting, great promotions. They are very good in range maker. So when you when you are watching on TV a single race or single uh, whatever sports is, you can see that. They are really, really putting the attention to be the best makers. The production is not only about what we were saying yesterday, it's not only about the content, it's also how you explain the content. 
You're going to have the best event, but you have to produce it very well. Global Labs, they have the budget to have huge productions. They invest a lot of money in to have a great production. But the technology that we have in the world right now, we have a great technology to provide good production and to provide good experience for the events. So at the end, uh, the, the big difference between a global property and a local property is the way we do things. Because we have a bigger budget to do things. So, best events, best production, best technology, at the end, will provide a great fan experience. We cannot compete with all the brand touching the players, but if our challenge is that we have to be able to tell a fan from counters that is not going to the game, that if you don't go to the counters game, and you don't go to the NBA game, with the NBA you will feel and you will breathe the game as you were at the arena. And probably a local brand cannot bring you the same experience because they don't have the same value of the chain. Also, there is another thing. Now the local properties are having the best athletes, but also the best international athletes. Before, there was not this identification that we were talking about with local brands, but now global brands have also a good identification. So in Germany, we have Whiskey, and the Soa, and the Turkey, and Toy Park. We have Kalinari, Ricky Rubio, we have Arjuna. So we are having more and more and more international people to have this connection with the fans. Um, one of the key things that the NBA did to develop the NBA property internationally was having international players. We have 89, 84 international players from 30, 37 different countries uh, right now in the NBA. And this gives us a good connection with the, with the, with the fans globally. So this is, we started with 92. And 64 were from EMEA, which is Europe, Europe, Middle East, and Africa. 27 or 30 teams have one international players. Only 76 students are Euro Americans do not have international players. We have to compete with the local brands, and the identification is our main problem. But having players that are from the local, uh, different countries, we grow the brand a lot. And the San Antonio School is a good case here. Because right now they have 10 international players. Imagine how international the brand is becoming to have such a roster. Again, um, maybe our local brand they don't have the budget to do all of this. But they should do all of this because in the end, um, technology gives you access to the fans of all over the world. So a global brand can be very present in countries as the NBA having a Facebook, having a Twitter, having YouTube, having an NBA no access, NBA.com, NBA TV. So you have the application, NBA TV link pass, you can download it here, you can download it in New York, and you can have all the information about the league. I'm not sure that a local brand can give you all the information about the league because it's a huge investment. You have all the content, all the games. Uh, condensed versions of the game. So global brands are providing more and more and more info to the markets globally in an all different ways. Let's go talk a little bit about the fans and how we recruit the fans. Um, we were talking a little bit yesterday about how the fans is the hailing, how they have the awareness, how they have the engagement, how they are being more and more and more uh, consumers and global brands, the engagement. Of course, we have our strategy for the youth, 6, 12, 10, 12, 18, and more like monetization. When the people is young, they don't spend money. But if you engage them at this stage, when they're 18, 40, they have a little salary, they are, start to, they are starting to work, they can spend money in the NBA. So we can have Adam Van, which is having Jersey, we can have the Link fan, they have a castle fan, or they see some games, but they are not very, they are not very much NBA. Or we have the inactive fans, where they see the highlights. You put the news on the, um, you put the, the highlights on the news. They will see on TV what what's going on with the NBA, but they are not going to see the games. They are not going to spend three hours watching the game. And we have all these platforms: TV, television, media, e-commerce, and brand extensions. 
So at the end, all of these together is what is doing our sports business. I don't know, you tell me if the governance, for example, summits, or let's not talk about all the teams or Olympiacos, but uh, things. They have their own TV, TV uh, production, they have their digital platforms, they have events outside of the arena to engage fans and to promote the brand. They have social media, they have e-stores, e-commerce, brand extensions. Local ones, they will have this, all of this, because they are very focused on one market. They are very focused in the fans that are in, in, around the sea. And their goal, maybe, is not to become international, because they are focused in the local market. So they don't have this vision to have all these things, all these platforms, to present their brand or what they do in the fans of the world, because uh, Sanjay's government is thinking about Sanjay's government's fans. It's not thinking about fans, potential Sanjay's government's fans in Malaga or in Brampton. So their mission is a little bit different than the global brand mission. So I would like to, to talk a little bit about, uh, I don't know, I have uh, different people from federations and, and, and some other uh, clubs here. So I would like to, to ask people what are the challenges in their federation or in their local club compared with the challenges that a global property could have. Had. So now we have here people from the Czech federation that we were talking yesterday about some things uh, to the Battle of Square, some uh, local projects. So what's the challenges that you have for them? So do you want to share a little bit? Please. In, in like the NBA, line and stuff? Well, no, we just had a discussion yesterday that um, to me this is a good inspiration, it's wonderful and everything, but it's really entirely different level. And of course we are able to do in the Czech Republic as a federation. But of course, it doesn't mean we're going to give up. So uh, how much of it is applicable here in Czech Republic? No, for example, what, what are the challenges for a local team in the Czech Republic? Yeah, challenges for all of the youth is definitely the budget in the first place, always. And uh, general managers of the clubs, they are only can keep talking about the budget, budget, budget. And they do not pay attention to uh, the marketing and media such as uh, social, social media and uh, all those activations for fans and for partners. So they are only fighting to keep the budget to survive the season and go to the next one. But this is a mistake. And so this could be an inspiration. Of course, we cannot do everything at once, but step by step, maybe we can work on it. Um, not that much developed market as the US or, or Spain or France or the big sport markets. Any other from <coughs> other clubs? Children's <coughs> League? Let's talk a little bit about the Liquid Federation. So, what are the challenges for national teams? Like strong identification, strong uh, product here locally, but it's just a national problem. So, what do you think about the uh, challenges for the national team or for the national federation? Let's uh, um, But, yeah, sure, I can speak from my own experience. Um, actually, I will touch a little bit on the um, back days when I worked on the basketball league, the Baltic basketball league, so it involved uh, three countries, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. And so a lot of this, me and Ben Douglas, we worked uh, on, on various projects, and, and some of this we try to, you know, encourage teams to do. It's like the NBA, they have various programs that they delegate to the teams to, 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 to promote and, I guess, participate in. And so what the, the main challenge is I, I was faced with as a media director back then was some of the clubs do not realize the value of it, like various programs. Like, can you go back a slide? Uh, like, okay, digital events, social media. Number of teams don't even have this. And so, okay, they may, may be lazy or they might not know about it, but the problem is that they don't realize the value of it, which, you know, they think, oh, if I do this, I will spend a lot of money. No, you actually can, can turn things around and maybe make money out of it. So, so 
So the, the problem was some clubs just, you know, couldn't understand what we were trying to discuss with them. So, so for some of you that you are going to work in the sports industry, uh, I'm just pass the microphone somewhere. Uh, uh, if you are in a club, what's the best, the first thing that you would do if you are walking around after watching this presentation? Again, question? Could you repeat the question? Uh, if you are just, just being hired by some guys, and you are a marketing, marketing director, what would you do? What's the first thing that you would do to, in a local round to develop the business? Today, if I am get as high as you as a marketing director, tomorrow, what would you do? <laughs> oh, please, what, what's the problem of each of you are from all these things that you I would uh, take a look at a fan base, maybe, and uh, uh, taking uh, some action supporting to the fan base. It's, 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 it's something that is it's the right answer. I mean, there's no one answer, but for me, the right answer, I would say the same. I mean, people, when they see local brands or local brands, when they see all these things and all the business lines, they're even with the media, with the inside the company, they get a little bit confused about, oh, should we do this, should we do that, should we do this? And, and the main focus is always the fan base. The main focus is that, okay, I'm going to go around, can I do all these things that I know the brands are doing? Yes, but do I need to do all of this? Maybe yes, maybe not. The first question is, what's the purpose of all this? We want to connect with fans of the and we are not a, we are local brands, the teams are doing their own strategy, and Memphis team is doing their own strategy in Memphis, and the league is doing the global strategy for all of them. And Memphis, let's talk about local brands and global brands. We have local brands on planet. Memphis, they have their own TV in Memphis, local TV. They have two EMBA, all the digital parts, NBA.com, NBA League Pass, etc. etc. They have local events. Something that in Europe we don't do very much. We don't do graduate events. Uh, we don't go to the streets. We don't go, uh, the players don't go to the schools and have clinics. In the NBA, the players have a, a minimum, I don't know, that's five or six appearances where the club is saying, you're going to go to this hospital, you're going to go to this school, you're going to, you're going to run four clinics. So we do events locally. And in Europe we don't do this that much. Social media, social media is so easy to do now. It's not expensive. And we can have a clear interaction with the fans. We can talk directly with them. One of the amazing things that are happening it was Twitter and, and Facebook. I was saying yesterday we have 430 million uh, followers. But it's huge. It's massive. It's massive audience. So how we interact with the fans. What are the conversations in social media? How we can be part of the conversation and talk about the things that are key for us. This is something that is very cheap. Every club, every federation can do. And it's, it's, it's a great tool because we are 24 hours talking with the fans. So the more you're interacting with them, the more you can convince them to come to the game, to spend some money, to do everything. The store, e-commerce, this is a little bit more complicated, the teams locally they don't do that, the league does it for them. The brand extension is like NBA cafes, NBA centers, NBA gyms, arenas, uh, own their, their own arena. It's a little bit more complicated, but it's also something that the local brands can do. One thing that everyone is forgetting um, is that the global brands, they need the local teams on the world, and not necessarily NBA teams. One thing that is important for us, and we are committed to develop it, develop basketball around the world, is because we ultimate benefit of the development of basketball. Um, every country in Europe that the basketball is going down at the local level, for example, in Italy we had a great league, Italian league was huge 10 years ago, now it's a weaker league, we have less fans in Italy. The NBA has good players, and good players, but if the local league is going down, the basketball in this country is going down. And at the end, the NBA will struggle a little bit more in the country. 
So local brands are important for us as well. And the more you develop possible locally, the more possible will be uh, in your city, and perhaps there will be more funds for the APA. So not necessarily a global brand is competing with a local brand. We have a common interest, which is having basketball fans in your city. Because Kaunas will be in very much because you're a passionate basketball fans. And the more you're a basketball fans, and the more I work, well, I was working with business, more I will work with them. Now, in the fire finish, the more we work together to develop local brands and local fans, I will benefit as well. We're going to have better talent, better players in the NBA, some players in the time, and we're going to have better players as well. So, also it's important to develop a lot of them. I know what that guy will do. He's crazy about video games. So, NBA 2K, where does this fit in here? Video game? What? The video game, NBA, like 2000, the 2K or whatever, video games. Video games. It's not owned by you, right? Uh, it's a license that we give to 2K. Yeah, so where does this, somewhere here? Uh, we have a, yeah, to that extent, we have a, a licensee department. So we give license, and this license can be for brand extensions, for you know, any cafe, uh, 2K. Uh, we just had a last year we had a game with the staff to have a NBA t-shirt, you know, the Tana Sports Program. It was a, it was not a piece of jersey, it was a Tana jersey, but it was with the NBA fans and teams. My question is about, I think it's about really important for everyone of us. How are you evaluating or make evaluation of the packages when you approach the brand? How are you determining the price for the rest? Well, uh, it depends. I mean, we have to be flexible because we cannot have a global brand. As I was saying, it has to be flexible because we are going to every single market all over the world. And the same price, uh, the same package that in the US would cost. $10 million, dollars, maybe in Lithuania is half a million dollars. It depends on the market and it depends um, what kind of company are you selling. For example, uh, in TV, it will be a different price depending how many hours of content you have. You're going to have one game per week, you're going to have three games per week. You have a, also, we take into account you're going to have games in prime time, you're going to have games in prime time, it's going to be free to channel. It's not going to be a feature channel, it's going to be a paid TV channel. How many, how many millions of subscribers do you have? So, taking into account, into account all these numbers, we understand how big the business will be for us and for you being partners together, and how much we will benefit, and how much the market pays you to have on your property. And then with all of that, we're asking for a third amount that will meet both expectations, so you can get some money, we can get some money. Um, just to be clear, if we have a prime time deal with uh, Target, and we have an ABC and NBC, it's a prime time game on Sunday, it's free to wear, where we're going to have 60 million watch of the game, and we know that we are going to have 60 million watch of the game, the, uh, the advertisement that this TV will make because power would be, would be much more than uh, if I'm selling these games to a free to channel in Lithuania at 4 o'clock in the morning when I think that I'm going to have 30,000 people watching the game because it's at 3 o'clock in the morning. So I'm going to ask for different money because I, I know the value of my property depending on the markets. Um, I was just saying this on TV, but it's the same with the sponsorship. <coughs> the sponsorship, we, we do uh, packages, global packages for global brands like Adidas, like the NBA, the official NBA bank, but also we have national partners, we have national packages, where, uh, for example, Bimbo is a national partner in Spain, and they only have rights to activate our brand in the market. Uh, the NBA has multiple global properties, they package uh, whatever we sell between markets and categories. So if you want to have a global brand Samsung, we go to Samsung and we say, we are a global brand, we are going to give you the possibility to be all around the world with us, or 
maybe, like it is the case, Samsung said, no, no, I'm just interested in penetrating the US market and I just want to have rights in the US. So we said, okay, that's going to be only the US market. Only is 250 million, million people living there. It's not going to be funny, it's 5 million, so we take into account how much people. Where it will be, you, something will be on our board, okay? And it will be in prime time because in the US the games are in prime time. So we are devaluating the value of having Samsung at the prime time in the US market. If I go to Samsung in Lithuania and, and we don't have Samsung in the US, for example, or I go to Beachy in Lithuania and they want to be a sponsor of the NBA, the problem will be another because they are not going to be the world but they don't have the US market rights, so they're not going to be in the arena. They're not going to be in the board of the free zones or the circles. They're not going to be there, so they can have out of them during the games in the local TV, but it's going to be at 3 o'clock in the morning, and only in Lithuania. It's going to be less than players and players. So I can ask them to see what they And if they are going to sponsor uh, our events, it's not the same to sponsor the other star in the Orleans this year uh, that will be big and sponsored in the other star in the body of where they can see the other star, but they are going to be in the other star. And if they want to be sponsors in the body, and I don't have the other star, and I'm having a grassroots that is because the only thing that I can pay in the body has a different value. It's not the same being a sponsor of the other star, even if it's in the Orleans, and being a sponsor of uh, three graduate events, three, three or three competitions that I can have in Canvas, Calipenda, and Venus. It's going to be totally different. So, if a national partner wants to be, uh, our sponsor wants to be a national partner in Lithuania, and I have three events in the streets, or I have 15,000 people attending in each city, then it's an amount of 15,000 people. It's not going to be, they're not going to be on TV. They're not going to be on the, um, or digital, or maybe I can put a digital platform for this event so they can be there. Let's rebuild the packets. We see how much people can attend. We see how much uh, impact we can have in the media. And then with all of that, we can, and knowing what the market is paying, because we also have to take into account that maybe, um, for example, the US market sponsorships are very expensive. The amount that, the money that properties are paying in the US or be a sponsor of one property is much, much, much bigger than any Champions League team or whatever. It's huge. Because the, the, the US market is very expensive. And it's the same with the UK. England is very expensive as well. So, a national uh, partner or a sponsor that can have rights in one country, maybe in, in UK can cost one million, and maybe in Greece. The same things, doing the same three x number of events in the streets with the same media package can be 150,000 euros. Because it's the market value. At the end of the day, I was with the example that to buy an apartment in New York will cost you one million, to buy an apartment in a small city in, part, uh, in, in Spain could cost you 100,000 euros. It is the same, like the scores with this apartment, but it's the market value. Who is telling you how much the market is paying for that? and how much the properties are asking to the market rate. So, to your question, we have to be flexible. We have to, to study, uh, uh, read some numbers, see what the market is paying, and with all of that, we make a, what we consider is a perfect portion. More questions, colleagues, friends, and students? So, um, one more thing. If um, one thing that we see as well with the local brands and that th they want to become more global brands is that you have to have, if you want to become from local to global, you have to have a strategy behind that. You can't just oh I'm gonna have social media, I'm gonna have a conversation with people in Taipei. Yeah, but you are some these companies. Why are you not talking with people in Taipei? So Barcelona, Real Madrid there are a lot of teams. Barca is becoming more and more a global brand. And now they have fans that are fans to this club, not to a lead property of Formula One, which is Formula One is amazing, and that is what they have 
a clear understanding that Barcelona has to engage people around the world. And to do that, being a local team that explains Barcelona, they have to have a story behind. If you see, I'm talking about football teams now, just to not talk about uh, Barcelona all the time. They have also similar uh, things that we do. Uh, a lot of brands like Barcelona, they have international players. They have Messi, they have Neymar. So the Latin American market, they have a clear strategy in Latin America how to present uh, the brand Barca with Messi and with Neymar. In Brazil, the Barcelona is with some values. In Argentina, Barcelona is with some of the values. Of course, this is much more present in Argentina than Neymar. Like, Pancho is more present here than Gasol, which are uh, missing identification Gasol in Italia. But also, they have um, global games. Barca is playing global games as well. And Barcelona really is, okay, we have Latin America is on the group pro, and we have a talent that is from Latin America. But we, I'm talking about Barca, we have a great deal now with CCTV, China. And now they are putting put Barca games, a number of 40, 50 Barca games, Champions National League, they have more properties in China. So, Barca brand is very impressive in China. So, how we are going to engage fans in China? And they decided to go to China to play some games. So, they have this China tour where they will play in Shanghai, Hong Kong, Beijing, and they will play their games or they bring players there. And they have clinics, they have whatever, like we do. Graduate events, we come from a football academy and they bring players to China to talk about football. And then they bring the brand over there. They try to become much more local brands. And they try to provide experiences for people in Taipei, of people in Beijing, of people in Asia and Europe, provide a good uh, social media experience, digital experience. They have Barca TV, but the Barca TV is a, a program where they provide like six hours of food in country talking about Barca. They sell this company around the world. They, they just have a deal with Bean Sports, which is a Al Jazeera uh, TV, to have Barca TV in the Middle East and in the US. So now you can see Barca TV in the US. So Barca, which is a local property, which is a local product, which is not a big, is doing their own TV and they are selling the TV all over the world. They have a digital platform, they have a social media, they do events. They do the Barca tour, and they, they're going to go to U.S. next year because now they consider that the market in the U.S. is priority for them because the big sports industry money is in the U.S. They have a social media, they have an e-store, e-commerce, you can buy t-shirts, Barcelona t-shirts, they will send it to you, and they are trying to do brand extensions. Finally, this morning, people from my office sent me a, a link that they just recently opened a Barcelona a Barca restaurant. So you can also have a restaurant where everything is branded Barca. And they have a Barcelona stores, okay? And these stores, where you can buy the jerseys and whatever you want to buy from Barca, they also have that. So people are thinking, oh, this is just common brands, ABA or Puma One. A lot of platforms cannot do all this. No, they do. I mean, but, and people say, no, Barca is to be. Yeah, it's to be, but they're doing all of this. So, at the local level, maybe you can start with all of this, what you were saying before. You start just with one thing, and then add the other thing. Maybe this is the first one too, because it's very cheap. How we are going to interact with fans, and then how we are going to tell them to go to the store and buy from us. How we are going to tell them to come to our bar. How we are going to tell them to come more to our events. What we do in our events. What we are going to communicate to come to our events to spend money. And this is a little more expensive. But local clubs are doing this as well. Barcelona, for example, talking a little bit more about Barca. Um, now that they have Barca TV, Real Madrid has Real Madrid TV as well. They do 12 hours of content. Content quality, I don't know very much. Because they, they talk about press conferences, of course, they have a, a lot of uh, commentators that are sitting down and they talk about Real Madrid, what the Real Madrid is doing. If the, the player is sick or not, this is incorrect. This is there. Is the coach doing the right thing? Is not doing the right thing? But they they provide content, like profiles content in the team. Real Madrid, 
is doing exactly the same thing. They have reality, they have reality digital, they have an application, they have an application, they do tools of all, they, they want to do this now. Of course, they have every the They do social media, they have reality stores. They're going to open huge, huge, huge brand extension in, 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 uh, in Middle East. They're having like, I'm a fan thing, it's a gym store, it's a restaurant for over 16,000 square meters in the Middle East, in the property in the Middle East. So people is invested in, all, in doing all of this. And the more and more brands, they think that they can promote themselves internationally, they will start doing all of this. So it's not only, it's not only one option. You cannot say, I'm this or that. You can mix things. And again, local brand, they need local brands, they need local brands activated in all of this as well. So we are not competing. The more fans are watching uh, Kaunas game, the more fans will watch the NBA games. So we are uh, supporting a lot of organizations globally in the NBA to activate marketing. So when we talk with the federation, when we talk with the club that they want to develop something like this, we help them to develop something like this. Because whatever they do is going to, we will ultimately benefit as well. So we don't think that the police think, oh, the NBA is coming to Europe, it's going to take out the team, take out the room, no, no, it's the other way around. The more you have the local teams, the more we will have fans for all of us. Because a fan, and this is uh, something very important, a fan that is a basketball fan, they don't choose. I know, I'm just a New League fan. I'm not a local league fan. No. We have Chinese comments fan. What's the local league and what's the New League? So they see more properties because it's a basketball fan. And they will see the European Championship and the Lithuanian National League because they, they follow whatever the property is within the year's sport. So a fan that is watching the NBA is also good for a local property because they will watch more the local games if they enjoy the game in general. So the things that global properties are trying to come to be on the game, but it's the other way around. We're trying to build up games together so we can bring fans to share uh, our passion for, for, for whatever we do. In basketball, in football, in Formula One. So more questions. Okay, any last comments, questions? Before Chus leaves us, where are you heading next now? What? Where are you going next now? Now? Well, I'm going back to Madrid and then move to London and New York. It's a busy guy, so this is really an excellent opportunity for you guys to steal some mouse so you have a last chance. Okay, so thank you again for Chus.